All right, we're going to take a look at strings. Now, a string is just a sequence of bytes. In view, a byte is just 8 bits, and each bit is just either a 1 or a 0. Now, I said that a string is a sequence of bytes, and we can store that sequence of bytes in a section of memory. Now, a string is pretty much a memory address and a length. So let's say we have this memory address. We could go ahead and store the first letter of a word. Let's say the word's going to be hello. So I could store the value H here. I could store the value E here, L, L, and O. So if I have a memory address and then a length, it can tell where all of those values are stored in memory. Now we have two different string literals here, and string literals in Golang are encoded in UTF-8. Now, just as a little history lesson, you go to Wikipedia, you can see that uh, it was actually originally designed by Ken Thompson and Rob Pike. These are two of the major uh, designers of Golang. So, and if you're wondering what UTF stands for, it's just Unicode Trans Transformation Format. And as you can see, from back in the early 2000s, UTF-8 has actually done very well for itself. It's become very popular. Okay, so back to our example. We have our are two different string literals. We have hello there, and I don't speak Mandarin, so I'm not going to say this well, but I believe it's pronounced something like ni hao, and it's, it's just another way of saying hello. So we're going to go ahead and print both of those off, and then we're going to go ahead and take the first character, which for hello is just h, and we're going to print the length of that. And then we're going to go ahead and print the length of the first character of our other phrase as well. Let's go ahead and run that. All right. So H is returning a length of 1. And our other character here is returning a length of 3. Now that might be a little bit surprising to some. Now what's really going on here, it's returning the number of bytes that are representing that character. As you might expect, h is just one byte but being that there's so many different languages and so many different characters to cover we can't just cover it just with one byte we have to have several bytes so this one actually takes three bytes to represent that so we're going to go ahead and run a loop here and we're just going to run it on the letter h like we said the letter h only has one byte, so this is only going to run one loop. And we're printing off the hexadecimal, which is 48, decimal is 72. And as you can see, it's just one byte. Now we can actually print off H using these values. So let's say we have hexadecimal, and we have our decimal number we should be able to print off the capital H for both of those. And there we go. So, like I said, when we're pulling our hexadecimal 48, and put that here. Now, the compiler has to know this is a hexadecimal number, so I need to put a 0 and an X at the front, or else it's not going to be able to tell the difference from a regular decimal number. Like we said, our decimal number was 72. Pass that in, and the built-in string function will say, hey, this is a decimal. It'll treat it accordingly and give us the correct character back. Now, like I said, if we use the hexadecimal number, but we input it like it's just a decimal number, well, the compiler is going to think like, hey, that's you know, it's just a regular base 10 number, and we're not going to get the correct character back. So 
this isn't going to work because we didn't put a zero and an x in front to let the compiler know like hey this is a hexadecimal number okay so we're going to go ahead and loop through on the first character of our other phrase as well and as you might expect look we said there were three bytes so it looped three times as you can see we have three different bytes and we have a hexadecimal value for each one of those bytes and we have a decimal value for each one of those bytes and we can't really use those very easily to print something off what we really want is the code point so for the hex value for the code point so for every character we're printing to the screen there is a code point now h is pretty pretty simple because the code point is just the hex of the one byte but we need to find the hexadecimal of you know for the code point for all three of those so i went ahead and and grabbed those and so let's go and print this off here's our hexadecimal one and here's our decimal one and there it prints both those off so let's take a a deeper look So letter H, as you can see, um, our hex number and our hex code point are the same. When it's one byte, it's going to be able to do that. You're going to see that with a lot of uh, English letters. Now, on the other hand, um, we can get the hex for all three of those. But to print that off, what we really want is the hex value for the code point so the code point is just all those bytes representing a single character now what we're going to do here is we can actually print that off by handing it those first three bytes so we're going to go ahead and print let's just go ahead and run that okay so here we're just grabbing the first index of our hello there and so that's just an h and we can print that off now this one here this one's not working because we're just grabbing the first index. So we're just grabbing the first byte from our character here. And that's, that's not going to work because we need all three of them. So it gives us a whole other value altogether. So let's go ahead and comment that one back out. Uh, much better. Now what we're doing here is we're grabbing the first three bytes of our phrase up there which is for this character here so it's index 0 1 and 2 or 3 is not inclusive so just index 1 2 and 0 1 2 and we get the first one and then we go ahead and pass it the three bytes from indexes uh let's see uh 3 4 and 5 because 6 is not inclusive and there's the second one. Now let's go ahead and print off the length for both of the full phrases. Hello there and ni hao. As you would imagine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now over here, though we're only seeing two characters on screen, both of these are represented by three bytes. So that's where we get our six. Now, instead of using our loop that we're using up here, where we're looping through every single byte, we use this for loop. We can go ahead and just loop through every, every code point, which doesn't make a huge, huge difference on you know, we're just using pretty regular English letters here. You know, it'll just go through hello there, gives our, you know, what index number, the decimal, hexadecimal binary. 
As you can see, each one of these is one byte as you would expect. And we can use you know, the hexadecimal values like, like this if we wanted to, and a regular decimal values, and we're just going to print off the word hello. There we go. Now with this one, it can be a little bit handier because it's going to hand these back one code point at a, at a time. And being that we only have two characters, so we have two code points, that's why it only runs, runs twice. And as you can see, you know, this was at index zero and the other one starts at index three. And we have our decimal values, so let's go ahead and use our hexadecimal values here and our decimal values here. You go ahead and print those off. There we go. And it prints off our phrase. Now, like I said, a string is just a slice of bytes. Um, we can create our own slice of bytes. Let's go ahead and do that. And go ahead and print that. So we're handing in this, or our, our slice of bytes. We're handing this in right here, and it's printing it off right there. So we could actually use hexadecimal, leave off the zeros, we can put the zeros in. Should run just the same. There we go. We we'll still get hello. Now. Here's where we could run into a little bit of a problem. Here we're trying to create another byte slice, and we're trying to use the ones for our, our phrase here. So this first one, this one actually uses three different bytes. So this hexadecimal number is too big to be represented in just a single byte. And the same thing for this one. So let's go ahead and just run it to show the error that we're going to get. Yep, it overflows a single byte. This is just, you know, that number is just too, too big. But we could go ahead and store that in a slice of runes. So okay, so. We have our slice of runes, and obviously these are just singular bytes, so it's not going to have any, it, any issue. It's just going to print off hello. Now, with our rune slice 2, this slice of rune, now remember, runes are different than bytes. A byte is an unsigned int 8 as well, and a rune is an int 32. So it can actually hold up to 4 the size of four bytes, so it's much larger. So this has no issue whatsoever, so we have a lot more different options that we can use with that. And just to show, I'm going to go ahead and print off type for byte slice one, rune slice one, and rune slice two, and go ahead and print off the type for each one of those. And like, like we said, byte slice one, well, that's just an unsigned int eight. And as these others, like we said, these are int 32. So this is just another way of saying, hey, this is the size of our byte. And int eight is, you know, that's the same as saying, hey, it's a rune. A rune is an int 32. And if you see an int32, that can be a clue that you're working with runes. Now, I hope that kind of cleared up what's kind of going on underneath the scenes. There's a lot of confusion people uh, very often will think, you know, because you know, they might just run the decimal number or the hexadecimal number on the very small English number since it could be the same same number, or not hex, I'm sorry, the, the hex number 
for a byte and the hex number for that code point can be the same with those lower numbers. So that's why people might think like, hey, for every character, there's just one code point or one uh, byte for that. And that's simply not true. Uh, the very large ones, there can be several, it could be up to four different bytes. And in those cases, you know, it might just be just easier to store it inside of a rune. So, cause you know, you're going to have, you're going to have that extra space. Um, I hope that cleared some things up and I'll see you in the next one.